Greetings in Jesus precious name. Welcome to this beautiful afternoon, morning, evening or night time wherever you are tuned in from, whatever time zone you are in. We bring greetings to you in Jesus name. This is the Revive Nations stream. Wherever the waters of this river come, there is life, there is freedom, there is redemption, there is restoration, there is forgiveness. I hope that you have been a beneficiary and a and a thankful, grateful recipient of what God is doing on this stream that God is releasing through this stream. In this season we have been meditating on the word rooted the lord has been teaching us from our prophet from our dear father the leader of this movement uh, prophet shaiju matthew he has been teaching us how we need to be rooted by the rivers not one river but multiple rivers that can nourish us that can feed us that can uh, help us to be fruitful and we get to experience this multi-dimensional god last week we were learning how we need to be rooted in two important places not just our prayer and reading the bible but the place that our prayer and our reading the bible has to take us to the prayer it leads us to a place of experiencing the presence of god So our man of God taught us how we need to be rooted in the presence of God. And it is not just enough that we be rooted in the presence of God. It is necessary that we be rooted in the voice of God. I thank God for everyone who is on this stream this time at this day who knows the and and recognizes and acknowledges the scent voice of God. in their family in their church in their ministry over their city and their nation it's not enough that we have knowledge or just understanding about scriptures it is necessary that we be rooted in the voice of god in the person that the lord is using to minister to us in the person that the lord is uh, sending our way to direct and lead us and i hope and i pray that you are intentional about journeying with us in this season and may the lord bless you may the lord bless your altars that you are building may the lord bless the offerings and the tithes that you have been bringing into this ministry into your churches wherever you are rooted and planted in may the lord cause his face to shine upon your sacrifices your prayers are not being ignored in this season you have to remember that your prayers are being heard in heaven your prayers are being written down your prayers are being answered and your victory is right at the door see this year we are going to see the manifestation of this word rooted the more we continue to persist the more we continue to go deeper the more we will become greater the more we will become stronger and we will be able to sustain and survive and come out of this with a flourishing smile a flourishing family a flourishing fa- finances a flourishing career a flourishing ministry i'm telling you you are not here to sink or drown you are in the right place and you're in the right season and you are in the right stream this past few weeks we have been studying on this wednesday nights on the end times and the one world government and you know we also touched on the seven different kingdoms that have uh, that that have come and gone and we also touched about the mark of the beast last wednesday night we'd love to know what god is speaking to you what god is teaching you from this uh, series you know this is uh, primarily informative but i hope that uh, beyond the information that you gather from these streams you would intentionally grow closer to jesus the purpose of all of this teaching is to prepare you 
for the return of Jesus is to prepare you to see the Lord one more time to see him in person with the eyes of flesh and the best thing that you can do is to purify yourself is to purify your heart your hands the people around you just sanctify yourself in every area by the grace that the lord is giving you in this season that is the purpose of all this teaching it is not enough that we just go back with information that information has to begin to transform how we live what we do and the decisions that we make the things that we engage in the places we would invest our money in the political choices and prayers that we would pray or make uh, it has to change and transform our lives and i hope that you are intentional about journeying with us in this season make sure to uh, share this video with someone else who can also be blessed by this make sure to like the video so that others can also join and be updated and the word can spread about what god is doing through your church through the stream that you are planted and connected to if you are proud about this stream if you are proud about what god is doing where god has planted you then make that love known i'd love to see that in your in the comments as well you know keep your comments coming uh, it's such a joy to read your responses as we study the word together you know uh, sometimes it is uh, it is it is such an encouragement even to the preacher and even to other people who are joining in the stream for the very first time to read your comments to read your testimonies to read the the things that the lord is speaking to you so let's be intentional in this season to just connect not just with one another but with the word that is coming every week in every season today i wouldn't want to take a lot of time but i'll want to just read a few scriptures and bring up some parallels and help you understand the timeline or the progression of the time uh, towards the end days this is a very debated topic because if you read scripture you understand that jesus was not very intentional about telling us the exact day or the hour in fact jesus said that even the son of man doesn't know the exact hour or the day when he is going to come and yet what he did do was to give us the signs to give us the 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 outside appearances of those days and what would lead to what Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 3. It says later Jesus sat on the mount of olives. Isn't it isn't it beautiful that it is in the same mount of olives that he will descend on in the last day? It says later Jesus sat on that mount of olives. His disciples came to him privately, not publicly, privately and said, "Tell us, when will all this happen?" what sign will signal your return and the end of the world so this is the disciples asking jesus and jesus begins to give them the signs right now what we're going to do is we are going to read this parallelly with revelation chapter 6 if you read the book of revelation you would see how john is seeing all of the end times in the spirit realm he is seeing it outside of time so and as he is seeing them he is recording them in detail in the uh, same manner that he is seeing and experiencing them and so at one point the bible says that he began to cry because there was nobody found worthy to break the seals and finally Jesus stood up the lamb of God stood up and he was worthy to break the seals so now we're going to read about the seals being broken and what we're going to do is we're going to study the seals parallelly with what is happening in the book of Matthew with what Jesus said to his disciples 
in the book of Matthew what John saw versus what Jesus taught the disciples let's go to the book of revelation chapter 6 and verse 1 it says as i watched the lamb broke the first of the seven seals on the scroll then i heard one of the four living beings say with a voice like thunder come and i looked up and i saw a white horse standing there its rider carried a bow and a crown was placed on his head he rode out to win many battles and gain the victory so john is seeing a a rider who is sitting on a white horse and he comes and he is going to win many battles and gain a lot of victory on this earth and now let's bring this to compare with what Jesus said is going to be the first thing that is going to happen as a sign of the end times verse 4 of Matthew chapter 24 it says Jesus told them don't let anyone mislead you for many will come in my name claiming that i am the messiah and they will deceive many people and they are going to many people are going to be carried away by these people who come in my name and who claim that they are the messiah so this gives us a picture of the rider on the white horse so you should understand that you know at a later point jesus himself would come riding on the white horse and uh, the the rider on the white horse can get mistaken to be jesus can get mistaken to be the messiah can get mistaken to be the one who is going to bring solutions the leaders who are going to help people the leaders who are going to solve the problems that people have so the first sign that jesus said it is going to take that's going to take place is that there are going to be many messiahs that will rise up all over the world many ones not one or two many will rise up so there are going to be people who are going to come up and say i have a solution to poverty someone else will come up and say i have the solution to the environmental challenges to global warming somebody else would stand up and say i have the solution to uh, fuel shortage someone else will stand up and say i have the solution to all the diseases in the world uh, and i have the vaccines and i have the answers so many will come claiming to be the messiah usually we think that when we hear the term messiah we think that it's going to be religious in nature it doesn't have to be When Jesus came he did not claim a religious status he came as the answer to the problems to the physical literal personal problems of the people of his day and time and i believe that many people will come and are already here they are already coming on the white horse and they are going to come to win many battles and gain the victory and that is going to be a sign of the end times and when you see people rising up with solutions i'm not saying that you cannot or you shouldn't appreciate what they are doing i'm saying that you need to become aware of what time and what season you and i are in because this is what jesus spoke about this is what john saw and he recorded in revelation chapter 6 are you ready to go to the next seal it says in verse 3 of Isaiah of Revelation chapter 6 it says when the lamb broke the second seal i heard the second living being say come then another horse appeared a red one this time its rider was given a mighty sword and the authority to take peace from the earth and there was war and slaughter everywhere So the first person he came with solutions answers taking the place of the messiah the second one 
he comes on a red horse represents blood he represents peacelessness and he comes and he was given a mighty sword and authority to take away the peace from the earth and as a result of that there was war and slaughter everywhere i'm sure that you are already horrified by the kind of news that is coming up all over the world in different places you know we've recently witnessed riots in the capital of united states if you read or follow the news reports from india you would see brutalities and crazy things happening in the capital of india and uh, how 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 journalists are being shut down how uh, internet is being taken down social media accounts are being blocked how there is peacelessness for uh, days months at a stretch and this is just the beginning the bible says that this guy this red horse rider when he comes it, the, there is going to be no peace on the planet earth now let's go to the book of matthew like i told you we're going to read revelation chapter 6 and matthew chapter 24 parallelly and we're going to try to understand what jesus said in the light of what john saw and this is what the bible says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6 it says Jesus is speaking this and he says and you will hear of wars and threats of wars but don't panic yes these things must take place but the end won't follow immediately so the end is not yet here but these things must take place and he goes on to say in verse 7 nation will go to war against nation and kingdom will go to war against kingdom so this is going to be a result of the red horse rider coming to the scene so the first one is the white horse rider the guy with the solutions the second is the red horse rider so these are all demonic principalities that are allowed to control and dominion on the planet earth and as soon as they come they will unleash these destructive things these deceptive things and jesus goes on to say all of these things must happen and yet you should not panic because the end will not happen immediately and that is why you would you would know that all of these things has been happening for centuries wars rumors of wars kingdom rising against kingdom nations going to war against nations all of these things has been a common occurrence to us by now right the reason it will continue to be so is because the end is not coming immediately after this there is going to be a time frame there is going to be a waiting period it's going to be a slow progression and all of a sudden the times and the seasons will accelerate so the first one was the white horse rider then the red horse rider now let's read revelation chapter 6 and verse 5 it says then the lamb broke the third seal then i heard the voice of the living being say come i looked up and saw a black horse and its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand and i heard a voice from among the four living beings say a loaf of wheat bread and three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay and don't waste the olive oil and wine and when the lamb broke the fourth seal I heard the fourth living being say come then I looked up and saw a horse whose color was pale green its rider was named death and his companion was the grave these two were given authority over one fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and famine and disease and wild animals So now we see the third and the fourth seal. The third seal when it is broken the Bible says that 
a black horse came and the rider came and released a recession a global recession because of which the cost of food plummeted the cost of basic necessities see olive oil and wine they are luxurious stuff they are for pleasure and yet there are common things like loaves of wheat bread and loaves of barley that became extremely expensive because that was not available in plenty and verse the the fourth verse seven talks about the fourth uh, seal being open and it says the fourth seal released a a horse with which had pale green color and the rider's name was death but now this rider had a friend called a grave and these two they destroyed one fourth of the earth can you imagine one fourth of the earth would mean about 2 billion people on the planet earth would be wiped out and they would be killed with the sword with famine with diseases and even wild animals you know wild animals is something that we don't think is a danger right we may think about famine and disease and sword and uh, and wars and all of that and yet wild animals is something that we have never thought of as a threat but let me tell you that is also going to be part of this 2 billion people being wiped off the face of the earth please don't find me speaking harsh or judgmental things this is scripture i'm just opening up scripture to you we'll come to the glorious beautiful amazing grace filled part of the same scripture in a bit and then let's go to the book of matthew and read what jesus said about this matthew chapter 24 verse 7 and verse 8 jesus said there will be famines and there will be earthquakes in many parts of the world but all of this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come so now jesus is talking about how there is going to be famines there is going to be earthquakes there is going to be a lot of people dying and and this is going to be happening in many parts of the world but all of this is still only the first the beginning the start of the birth pains with many more of these to come so it's not going to be just a one off occurrence like this pale green uh, horse rider that comes it's not just going to be one event that's going to wipe off 2 billion people it's going to start small and slowly it will have authority and power over one fourth of the earth's population and it will cause the food the basic necessities to cost like a whole day's wage the bible says and then will come the time for the fifth seal i'm just hurrying through tonight's scriptures please don't mind i hope that you are able to follow along at the same pace and the same speed if you if you want more clarification feel free to leave it in the comments and we'd love to get back to you on those points uh, but i'd love for you to go back and read all of these scriptures on your own and study them spend some time reading up uh, parallelly Matthew chapter 24 and the book of Revelation chapter 6. Okay? Let me read verse 9 of Revelation chapter 6. It says, "When the lamb he broke the the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of all who had been martyred for the word of God and for being faithful in their testimony." Why were they martyred? Because of the word of God and because they were being faithful in their testimony so i'm telling you in this in the times to come it is necessary that you and i we be faithful to the word of god and that we be faithful to our testimony because our faithfulness to the word of god and our faithfulness to our testimony 
is what is going to irritate the enemy is what is going to hurt the enemy is what is going to threaten the enemy so make sure to hold fast to your allegiance to the word of god to the voice of god to be rooted in the voice of god and to be faithful to your testimony to hold fast to what god is doing in your life do not let anybody steal the stream that you are in this is your testimony this is your story this is your experience this is where you have tasted and seen that the lord is good you have to hold fast to it people may talk all kinds of stuff about it some people may even go to the extent of writing on social media some people may talk ill about you because you are associated with this stream but as long as you are being faithful to your testimony you are faithful to what god has done in your life you will be an irritation to the enemy and the bible says that when the fifth seal is broken there are going to be so many souls that will be martyred because of their allegiance to this word of god and because they are faithful to their testimony then it says verse 10 they shouted to the lord and said o sovereign lord holy and true how long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us so they are going to be at the altar of heaven crying out for vengeance on this earth jesus said about the same thing in matthew chapter 24 verse 9 on which he said then you remember the previous time when he said that there is going to be famines verse 7 and verse 8 it says there is going to be famines and earthquake and yet that will not be the end that will only be the beginning of the birth pains right it says then after that you will be arrested and persecuted and killed and you will be hated all over the world because you are my followers see the key phrase over here is all over the world it's not just one part one region one people group or one nation that we are talking about because if it's only one people group that we are talking about there is this is happening already right like there are some nations where people of god are not respected celebrated or tolerated they are being persecuted arrested and killed in some places but there's going to come a time when this is going to be a phenomena all over the world because you are my followers because of your allegiance to god's word because of your faithfulness to your stream to your testimony it says you are going to be arrested persecuted and killed all over the world this is going to be a result of the fifth seal being broken in that's what we see in revelation chapter 6 and it says jesus said it further he says and many will turn away from me and they will begin to betray and hate each other and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people sin in that season is going to be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold but the one who endures to the end will be saved and then he goes on to say verse 14 and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come see you should see this Jesus all all through the story he is telling different signs and different symptoms and different events that will take place the talks about the white house white horse rider then he talks about the 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 black horse rider the red horse rider the green horse rider and in all of this he doesn't say that the end will come he says it is only the beginning and many more of these events will happen but when he reaches this fifth seal where the souls of men are going to be uh, coming before the altar of god he says now the end will come why 
because many will turn from me and betray each other and false prophets will come up all over the place and they will deceive many people and sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold can you see that happening all over all around us even today in our day and time the one thing that probably hasn't happened till now is that we are not yet hated all over the world but with the coming of this one world government it is just going to be a matter of time before we will be shut down before streams like this may be impossible before we will become enemies of the state and enemies of any humanity that they want to flourish and propagate and it says that you and i we will be arrested persecuted and killed all over the world because we are the followers of jesus and it says in that season the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world and all the nations every people group you know when the bible says all the nations it's not talking about all the countries that we know about in our day and time it talks about every people group every people group on the planet earth they will hear it and then the end will come now jesus comes to the end times till now he's saying that this must happen this must happen this must happen and yet the end has not come but when the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world then the nations will hear it all nations will hear it and then the end will come that is the primary and the greatest indicator of the last days and the last times and the last seasons it is not the war it is not the pain it is not the death not the disease not the struggles not the problems that indicate that we are in the last times and the last days it is a great revival that will sweep over the entire world now that revival definitely will come because of persecution of a man of god has been teaching us about this he has been prophesying about this for such a long time there is going to be persecution there is going to be problems there is going to be arrest there is going to be anti christian movements all over the world you and i will be hated because of our belief system and as a result of that the good news of the kingdom will be preached you and i we will be faithful to the word of god we will be faithful to our testimonies and we will preach the word of god to the whole world all nations will hear it and then the end will come that is going to be the biggest sign of the end times don't let anybody tell you that because things are going bad the end time is here no the the sign of the end time is that there is going to be a big revival that will break out all over the world and when that revival comes we know that the end is here already so we are not waiting for a war or a rumor of war or for famines or for death that is not what we are waiting for all of those things the enemy will bring to pass whenever he wants to your responsibility and my responsibility is that the more we see these wars and rumors of war we become intentional to become faithful to the word and to the testimony to to preach the word of god to the ends of the earth so that it can usher the end time it can usher the the coming of the son of man verse 15 of matthew chapter 24 it says the day is coming when you will see what daniel the prophet spoke about the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing in the holy place this is something that jesus referred to in matthew 24 something that paul taught about in first thessalonians something that john will refer to in the book of revelation something that daniel had already seen in his day and time and he say and he says hey this is going to be something you are not going to miss that is going to be the sign of the end time that it will begin with this global revival and from there will happen the desecration in a holy place in a physical location 
then it says then those in judea must flee to the hills a person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack a person out in the field must not return even to get a coat how terrible it will be for pregnant women and women and for the nursing mothers in those days and pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the sabbath for there will be greater anguish than any time since the world began and it will never be so great again in fact verse 22 pay attention in fact unless that time of calamity is shortened not a single person will survive but it will be shortened for the sake of god's chosen ones so for your sake and for my sake that time is going to be shortened which means that you and i we are going to survive that time what does it say that if that time of calamity is not shortened nobody will survive but it will be shortened for the sake of you and me so that you and i we can survive that time because you and i we are god's chosen ones and we are going to survive the the craziness that the enemy is going to throw at us and it says that then if anyone tells you look here is the messiah or there he is don't believe it for false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive if possible even god's chosen ones you remember we spoke about this from the book of revelation chapter uh, 13 of how this beast will come up to do a lot of wonders and with all this creative miracles that he does he will deceive a lot of people including kings and queens and people in power he is going to deceive several people and jesus goes on he says verse 25 see i have warned you about this ahead of time so if anyone tells you look the messiah is out in the desert don't bother to go and look or look he is hiding here don't believe it just as the gathering of vultures show that there is carcass nearby so these signs indicate that the end is near and immediately after the anguish of those days the sun will be darkened the moon will give no light the stars will begin to fall from the sky and the powers in the heavens will be shaken now let me recount all the seals once again the first seal false messiah the second seal it it brought lack of peace lot of wars and rumors of wars and all of the third seal global recession fourth seal famine and death and destruction one fourth of the earth will be wiped away the fifth seal would bring forth the the persecution against the people of god and that persecution would lead to this great global revival where every nation will hear about jesus and then jesus says that point is going to accelerate history and immediately the end will be in process the end will be near the end will come and then he goes on to say that after all of these things happen the 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 desecration that daniel spoke about that is going to happen and when that happens we are preparing for something catastrophic and he says that the sun will be darkened the moon will give no light the stars will begin to fall from the sky and that is a sign of the sixth seal being opened let's go back to the book of revelation chapter 6 and verse 12 it says john as he watched he says i watched as the lamb broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became as dark as black cloth and the moon became as red as blood verse 13 then the stars of the sky where did it fall it fell to the earth like green figs falling from a tree that is shaken by a strong wind 
it says then the sky was rolled up like a scroll and all the mountains and islands were moved from their places then everyone the kings of the earth the rulers the generals the wealthy the powerful and every slave and free person all of them they hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains and they cried to the mountains and the rocks fall on us hide us from the face of the one who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb who is praying this this is kings and queens of the earth the generals the wealthy the powerful the slave and the free everybody alike they are praying they are saying we cannot tolerate this and then it says in verse 17 for the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to survive the same question that jesus brought forth in the book of matthew who is able to survive this nobody nobody can survive this sets seals unless if they are on god's side it says for the sake of the elect ones for the sake of the chosen ones that time is going to be shortened and if that time is not going to be short shortened none of us can survive that time none of us can come out of that place victorious but that time is going to be shortened that time is going to be reduced so that you and i we can survive see kings and queens because they don't have the revelation of who jesus is they really cannot survive that time they cannot survive the the famine they cannot survive the recession they cannot survive the 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 gospel being preached all over the world they cannot survive the red horse rider they cannot survive the deception of the white horse rider but the ones that trust in the lamb the ones that believe in jesus the ones that walk with god day and night they are the ones that are going to survive that time that season see i'm not here to tell you the year or the month or the day when all of this will happen i'm here to tell you this is what the bible says this is how it's going to lead up to the final days you know if you go to revelation chapter 8 we will read about the seventh seal it says when the lamb broke the seventh seal it was so horrible so horrifying so crazy that there was silence in heaven for a period of 30 minutes that is the only time in the whole history of the bible that you talk about silence in heaven that is how dangerous the seventh seal is going to be the seventh seal is going to unleash the seven trumpets of god and the angels they are going to come with blowing those seven trumpets and each trumpet is going to unleash more judgments on the earth now god is going to punish the whole world he is going to judge this earth it is going to begin first of course with a loving that white horse rider to come then the red horse rider then the black horse rider then the pale green horse rider and then coming to the persecution of the saints then the 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 stars the sun the moon all of it getting affected and and stars falling onto the earth like fig figs falling from a tree and finally leading up to the seventh seal being open where the trumpets are going to be unleashed upon the earth and jesus would speak about this in matthew chapter 24 verse 30 and 31 and he said and then at last the sign that the son of man is coming will appear in the heavens and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory that is why jesus said hey don't believe when people tell you that jesus is here or jesus is there because when jesus does come it is not going to be a secret it is not going to be 
uh, a coming where only half people will see and half people will be in doubt and they have no clue about what just happened it says when jesus comes every person is going to see it every eye will see him the bible says every ear will hear him will hear his coming and they will know and acknowledge that this truly is the lord of all the king of kings and the lord of lords they will acknowledge him they will bow their knees to him the only question is will they do it willingly or unwillingly you and i if we will bow our knees to him willingly we will not have to face the wrath of the lamb we will not be condemned instead we will be we will inherit the everlasting life that he will reward us on his coming but those of us that are not going to bow our knees to him willingly we will have to do it forcefully like when he comes there is going to be no other option for you and us than to forcefully accept that he truly is the lord of lords and the king of kings it says every eye will see because there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth and they will see the son of man they will see each and every one of them will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and then this is what he is going to do he will send out his angels and with his mighty blast of a trumpet and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world and from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven where right when he is in the clouds they will gather all the chosen ones from all over the world they are going to be the 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 sons and daughters of this kingdom they are going to be the ones that believe in him they are the ones who are going to be faithful to his word and to their testimony they are the ones who are going to survive the antichrist the one world government they are the ones who are not going to bend their knee to the systems of the world i pray and i hope and i believe that everyone who is connected to this stream everyone who is part of this uh, mornings or evenings devotion bible study that each and every one of you will survive and each and every one of you will endure till the end and shall be saved and shall be the part of the entourage that will join our king in the clouds see when the whole world sees jesus coming in the clouds you and i we will in fact not just see him but we will be with him we will be caught up to be with him and we will usher him onto this earth the earth that we have prepared for him the earth where we have preached the gospel to the ends of the earth the earth where we have sowed into with tears and prayers the earth that we have worked so hard to redeem from the enemy we will welcome our king onto this earth you and i we will not be seeing him from a distance we will be seeing him up close and personal and we will be with him in fact the bible says when we see him when we when we are when we are taken up when we are raptured you and i we will be transformed into his image and we will be like him we will become like him our bodies will put on a new body and we will we will be raptured in the twinkling of an eye we will be caught up into the clouds when the trumpet blast is released are you ready my dear friend for that day for that time i wanted to just bring this timeline into your attention because sometimes when we read matthew chapter 24 we think that it is just a absurd uh you know list of events that may take place in the end but if you read it parallelly with revelation chapter 6 you understand that each and everything that jesus said was chronologically in order of what revelation chapter 6 says it is going to happen according to those seals being broken being unleashed being opened for the whole world to see and like i told you earlier the wars are not going to be the sign of the end the 
the the famine is not going to be the sign of the end the false messiahs are not going to be the sign of the end even the torture or the arrest or the killing of christians are not going to be the sign of the end but a great revival a glorious g- glamorous breakthrough of the word of god going to every nation on planet earth the souls of thousands of people being saved all over the world a big big harvest happening all over the world that my dear friend is going to be the sign is going to be the ultimate sign that the end time has been begun it has come it is started so we who are on this stream of reviving the nations we got to pray towards that you and i we don't have to pray for the earthquake to come or the famines to come but we have to pray lord send revival lord use me for revival lord prepare my heart to be faithful to this testimony to this stream where you have planted me to this word that you have given me to every thing that you keep depositing into my spirit week after week help me to be rooted there help me to be rooted in your voice and help me to be rooted in your presence the more that we we are intentional in doing that the more we will experience the fullness the fullness you know our father taught us that we need to be rooted in his presence in god's presence and we need to be rooted in his voice you know when we were listening to this song and we were worshiping together at the beginning the song said leave me let me be here at the feet of jesus that's the best place for me to be that is the place where i will feel secure that is the place that i will be healed i just want to i just want to stay here forever and ever and ever that is where i'm going to be transformed for the rest of this week can you make that your desire that you're going to be rooted in the presence of jesus that you're going to be rooted in the voice of god that everything that you say everything that you do will represent will show forth will bring forth the glory of your king will bring forth the glory of your messiah may you be a carrier of this word to the ends of the earth may the lord burn this passion for revival in your heart may you be part of this end time army of god may you be part of this this glorious gospel that is going to be preached and released to the ends of the earth wherever you are come on let's pray together if you can pray with me in the comments just release the fire of god through your comments just release just release breakthroughs into your prayer life into the prayer lives of each and every person on this stream release the grace of god for us to flourish and go to the next level in our relationship with god release release come on don't stop don't let anything hinder you don't let anything that you're doing right now distract you connect to the presence of god that is available for us on this stream haboro ko seke me kela dikha ba shamandolo bo khosti ki mana na gaderege yes holy spirit we pray that right now there will be this deep passion deep desire for revival that will catch our hearts that will burn our in our hearts and that will not let go of us till we see that revival burn through the nations of the earth yes holy spirit cause us to be deeply rooted in your voice deeply rooted in your presence deeply rooted in this stream to be to be faithful to the word that you have given us to be faithful to the testimony to the experience to the relationships the 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 revelations that you have given us in this season that we will hold fast to them and as we do it we know that it will be a threat to the enemy and lord we are okay with that we are okay in even laying down our lives if necessary for the sake of the word of god and for the sake of our testimony Lord we humble ourselves before you let this fire continue to burn in the hearts and the minds of your children wherever they are let them stay on fire and may that fire be contagious when they go to work tomorrow 
when they interact with somebody today when they text somebody today when they leave a comment on the stream let that fire be contagious let it catch one more person let it catch one more sold out lover of jesus use his holy spirit for this great end time revival that you're releasing we love you and we surrender ourselves to your voice to your plans to your ways in jesus mighty mighty name we have prayed amen wow wow so beautiful to see each and every one of your comments and responses to what the lord is doing continue to remain in that fire continue to fan into flames continue to stay rooted in his presence because the more we get rooted the stronger we will become the deeper we will go and the greater we will fly and we will have access and we will flourish god bless you continue to keep the fire going the lord is preparing a great meal for us this weekend do not forget that prepare your hearts your bodies your offerings your relationships keep away every distractions and with great discipline and hunger let's come back to receive the word of god on sunday morning 11 a.m. thank you for tuning in my dear friends we'll catch up again this weekend <music>